the given data represent sample lengths in inches of fish caught with three different fishing lures. At the 0 0.05 significance level, test that the mean fish lengths for each lure are all equal. This is an ANOVA test where the null hypothesis is that all of the means are equal. Mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2 equals mu sub 3, where we could define those. We could say that the jump lure would be associated with mean sub 1, and the jack lure is associated with mean uh, mu sub 2, and the third mean would be associated with flash. It's always good to just make sure um, you know what you're referring to. That's the null hypothesis, that all of the means are equal. The alternative hypothesis, hypothesis can be written just in words. You can just say, the means are not all equal. That is, the population means. The means are not all equal. So even if we could do this with uh, 10 different items, treatments, and even if nine of them had equal means and one of them didn't, then, the, uh, then we would go with the alternative. But let's, let's take a look at what we do. So that's the setup for the ANOVA test. And then we get a p-value. And there are some formulas, and, and really the, the formulas, you can plug numbers in and then look on a table and, and get a p-value. But, you know, Excel will do the same thing for you, but just without the time of plugging numbers into a formula. I'm using Office XP Excel, so if you have an older version, absolutely this feature is, is available to you. And if you have the newer version of Excel, of course, it's available to you as well. First, you want to go to Tools, Add-ins, make sure that you have the Analysis Tool Pack, and then Tools, Data Analysis. And we're going to be doing a single factor ANOVA, A-N-O-V-A. So we'll choose that, and I'm choosing all three. So what I have here, let's, let's back up and, and just explain what's happening here. I have um, the sample lengths for the jump lure, the jack lure, and the flash lure. Notice that the sample sizes do not have to be the same, and Excel will pick up on that. They won't, it won't just throw a zero in, in these empty cells like it does with some other functions. It just says, okay, well, I know those are blank, and it, it disregards the blank cells. Also, you can choose whether or not to uh, include the labels, and we check that, or we're including those labels, and we want our... Um, sample data to be grouped in columns. So we've got all that. It's kind of like a, a flight checklist. Make sure you've got everything um, correctly checked and, and chosen. The alpha, that's our significance level, 0 0.05. Our output range, this is simply where do I want to start outputting this, and the upper left-hand corner of the output will be right there. So I choose that, and then I say OK. And now let's walk through all of the information, or at least uh, the pertinent information that is given. We've got the different groups, and we would call these the treatment groups. That's jack, jump, and flash. Jump, jack, and flash. We have the means here, the sample means. These are the sample means. And notice that the mean for jump is very close to the, to the mean for flash. And for jack, it's not too far off, especially with such a small sample size. But look at this variance. This variance is very small for, for jack. And so what that means is that even if jump and flash um, may end up, if you're just doing a test about two means, May, it may turn out that you would uh, not reject the null and say, hey, well, maybe those are, maybe we can't say that, they're, that they are uh, different. But, but we've got this jack here that's different and it's variant. So it means that its confidence interval would be pretty small. 
So it wouldn't overlap the confidence intervals of these others. So another way to look at that is I like to think of things in pictures. If you had jump, jack, and flash, I'm going to put these right in the same order. And let's say this is jump's confidence interval. So we have this along a number line. And then jack's number uh, confidence interval would be way up here. And um, flash's confidence interval has got a little bit smaller variance than, than jump. So maybe right about here. Uh, we can see that jack, the jack confidence interval, if this were a, a number line here and 10 is about here, let's say this is 13, then jack's confidence interval would be away from from the other two. So what I'm leading to is our between, between groups and within groups. And by the way, this is between groups is the treatment and within groups then would be the error. So if you see other tables set up for ANOVA, um, that's what these two mean, that Excel just calls it something just a little bit different. We've got sum of squares here. I, I'm not going to mess with that in this video. I'm just going to jump right to this, this p-value. p-value is small. Okay, let's cut to the chase finally and say this p-value is 0 0.008. Eight, one, and that p-value is less than the significance level of alpha is less than 0 0.05 so we will reject the null when you have a small p-value you can reject the null hypothesis and you're not completely accepting we never say accept we're not accepting the alternative but we sure are siding with it so, in the end, we'll say evidence suggests. We're not 100% sure, but we have a, a good evidence. The evidence that we have sure does suggest that the means are not all equal. Even if two of them uh, might be, we can't say that they're all equal. The means are not all equal.